What's going on guys? It's GPP baby. Welcome to another back testing video. Today we're going to be looking at the London kill zones. Um I made one of these videos last year when we only focused on London kill zones. So in this in this back testing video, all we're going to be looking at is the London kill zones. Now we are going to be taking into consideration the Asia range because I know that the Asia range, Asian range or Asian kill zone, whatever you want to call it, has a significant impact on price action during the London and the amount of back testing I've, that I've done, I've learned that what you'll find with the London is that it will refer to the Asian range as in it'll either trade back up to it, it will trade to the 50% level off it, but it uses the Asian range as almost like a barometer as to where it's likely to draw to after that. So one thing to take note of before we continue is what with the, with the Asian range usually when we're going to a new day it's um price if we're in a bearish market price will usually take out the high and then run for the low and then move lower for the rest of the day um but what what you tend to find is that if it does if it fails to say take out the high for example in this example it will pull back and do it at a later point which it does here and then here again at on tuesday the 5th of december at 10 o'clock before running lower so what i tend to what i tend to do when trading in london is always have the asian range marked out and Another thing is also also always have the midpoint of the Asian range marked out. So let's just get that sorted for us now. Like so. And yeah, I'm going to be looking. This is December the 5th. I'm going to start because I don't really trade Mondays. So I'm only looking from Tuesday onwards. And we're going to be looking at this London range. We'll look at Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. And then we can also go into other pairs um, such as Canadian dollar just to see how the London kill zone so hope you guys enjoy and let's get straight into it um so the london kill zone is between 2 a.m and 5 a.m so let's just thicken those up just so we can see i'll make it two I'll make this two so now we know that we're focusing on this range here and here's what i mean by um the asian range being used as a like a reference so there's a consolidation throughout here until we leave the consolidation we trade lower and we start running for these sell stops. Now we don't actually take out this sell side liquidity, but we do trade down into a nice fair value gap. But um, one thing to know is the fact that we respect this 50% level before breaking lower. But like I said, we're focusing on the London range. So let's say we've just started and we start to see this breaking market structure here. So this is the first thing we're gonna note. If you watch some of my other back testing videos, you know that this is what I always do. So nothing different here, but we have a nice breaking market structure. You see our price pulls right back up into this bullish bearish order block that caused the down move so it trades back into this which is highly sensitive that's a bearish order block and then that could be a sell in itself so we have a breaking market structure respect of the 50 percent of the asian range anticipation to go lower so we can sell on this candle here so we're just going to mark that like so that would be a nice sell and also it leaves a gap and we want that gap to stay open as that can now act as a breakaway gap so let's make that yellow or we can make it orange and we can call that a breakaway gap like so there we go so we have a breakaway gap and that's a nice selling opportunity and then we just make this a bearish order block And then you can see our trade price starts to run down into this low. And again, we anticipate the Asian low wanting to get taken. So we trade down. Once we take out this low, we have a nice pullback. One thing, one thing to take note as one thing to take note of is that we pull back into this wick here. And you see how we respect the 50% level of that. And I see this as a rebalancing. And the reason for that is because there's actually a um, there's technically an order block here because for this move to happen, this would act as an order block and you can see how we traded through it on the downside so it should act as a bearish order block and you can see that's what we get here. So there's respect here and here. So that's also a selling opportunity. And then price pulls lower, kissing goodbye to that Asian range. We can look at the 50% level of this bearish order block as well. Eight two. You see our price doesn't quite touch it, but that's consequent. I mean, that's mean threshold. You see our price pulls right back into that and then aggressively trades lower. 
And the reason that we see such a big movement away is because this block here is actually a propulsion block. So let's just mark that out as a propulsion block. We'll make it light blue. And the reason this is a propulsion block is because it propels it propels price lower. Why? Because it's a bearish it's a bearish order block on the way down. Yeah, it's a bearish order block that's already on the way down. Just like this here, this would also these would always also be proportion blocks. This would be a proportion block. So as we as we work through the price action, we'll start to see more of those. But yeah, that's just one thing to take note of. So let me just make this midpoint a little bit more clear as well. We'll make that thicker and we'll make this red actually. So you can actually sell into that propulsion block. Um, cool. And then we trade lower, rush in even lower, and then we pull back into this range once again. Now we can look at this fair value gap and you see how we trade up to the 50% above, just above the 50% level before price turns around at it. Um, but we also have an inversion fair value gap. So let's look at the inversion fair value gap first. This will be it here. And we can call that IFVG for inversion fair value gap. So we anticipate price to respect this level because we delivered on the upside and then on the downside with a bearish bias, um, you know, expecting a run down towards these lows. Now, it is, it is unfortunate that these lows didn't get taken straight away because I would have anticipated for that to happen. But um, you can see that that didn't actually happen. Like price ran much higher after that. But we'll talk about that once we get to that point. For now, let's just look at price action. So... Yeah, we pull back into this range. I'm just seeing if there's any entries or anything that is that is important or that I like the look of for us to take note of. So I like the look of this fair value gap here. And the reason for that is because we have a clear breaking market structure here. We start rushing towards these lows. So this makes this a perfect entry for a fair value gap. So we can just make that normal FVG that we can also sell at as we trade into that. And you'll see how that also lines up with this low here. So it's like a rebalancing. Quite quite a bit of consolidation here before we break lower once again. Um, I do want to make this known that this is a break of market structure here. Break of structure. And then we pull back into the range again here. You'll find that price tends to return right back into the wicks, and that's because the wicks are order blocks too. Because remember, there was down and up delivery here, and there was up and down delivery all along here. So this is a fairly traded price range from here to here, because we've had down delivery, up delivery, and down delivery. And then when we mark that out as a range in itself and look at the 50% level of it, you can see how price continues to respect that almost perfectly. And that's why you'll find that price, when it pulls back into these areas, it's just pulling back into these gaps which aren't directly gaps. Fair va wicks are gaps too, ICT states this all the time, wicks are gaps too, so we need to treat them like gaps, meaning that we can let it respect the consequent encroachment of it and understand that, like I said, it's, it's been delivered on the downside, upside, downside, so this is a fairly treated range, meaning that when price returns to it, we know that we can sell within that range and you can see our price continues to pull off and run lower. There is also kind of like a breaker here, high, low, higher, high, break, lower. So let's say that we didn't get in here. If we wanted to get still, if we still wanted to get in on the sell, this last down candle before this up move into that, um, what are we calling it? Fairly, this balanced price range. Um, the last down candle anyway, we can use that as an entry because that will be considered a breaker low. So we can call that breaker low. Well, breaker close even. And you can see our price trades into that a couple of times one two three and then trades away so this candle here acts as a breaker and there's a lot of overlapping that you'll see so this is immediate rebalance here 
when price um, when the next candle trades right back into the previous candles wick like this that's an immediate rebalance and does price touch it one more time fails to touch it there but it does trade up into this which is nice to see so yeah And then three o'clock is when there's an injection of liquidity in the London range. That's what that's something I found through backtesting. Um, IC hasn't directly said, but three a.m. I believe that's eight a.m. Uh, London anyway, and that's when a lot of news comes out. So you tend to find that a lot of liquidity and a lot of movement tends to happen within the London range, and we'll see that as we look at some more examples. But you can see here we have a nice expansion to the upside. Price runs straight up, taking out this buy side, resting above this swing high here. So we can write that out as buy side. And then we come back down, respecting this wick, and then we find support. and And for the rest of the, for the rest of the um, London session, it's quite heavily consolidated in general, so it's not really the best conditions to want to be trading in. Um, and you got to remember, it is December, so price action in general is not the best. Now, looking at all this, you can see it's just heavy consolidation, really not ideal. So I don't really want to get into that, but you can see that the the mate the one of the best moves that we could have got in on this would have definitely been this run from the fifty percent level of that Asian consolidation, leaving it running down, and then you can see it pulls back and runs for the Asia high, taking that out at about six o'clock. Before that, after that, we then have another reaction, and then I do believe we must have had some kind of crazy news release for us to have this price action here. But yeah, let's let's look at the London range off the Wednesday. So here's the Wednesday of last week. Now, don't get me wrong, price action last week was actually absolutely disgusting, so it's not exactly the best. But um, remember what I was saying about the Asian range, how you'll find that the high and the low and the, off the Asian range tends to get targeted in terms of full liquidity, because um, the Asian range is, is almost like a consolidation period for the market. So you'll see how straight away that high gets taken out before the London starts. So once we see that happen, and once we know that the buy side liquidity residing above Asia's high has been swept, we can then anticipate the low of the Asian range get taken, and you'll see that happening here during London. London. So that's that's another example of what I was talking about. Um, you'll see how this range though we do just pretty much consolidate the whole the whole way, but we can definitely have a look at the kill zone to see what we can possibly get in on. Now here's that 3 a.m. candle I was talking about, saying how there's a lot of liquidity and movement that tends to happen around 3 a.m. London. Um, I mean 3 a.m. New York time, which is in the London kill zone, about 8 a.m. in London. But um, if we look at price action from the London start, we can see how price has acted. So can we see a willingness to want to go higher? Uh, yes, we can. We have a break, a breaking market structure here. So there's clearly a run up into buy side liquidity. I'm going to put buy side. And the reason for that is because I can see a consistent support and, and willingness to want to go higher. So when price then pulls back down into the range, we can anticipate more accumulation. Um, and you'll also find that it's respecting this fair value gap residing here on the one minute. Now, obviously this is easier said than done because when you're actually in the charts, when you're actually in the charts and you see a big pullback like this, it can be quite quite daunting so to speak but um but yeah let's just carry on locking anyway so you can see we run higher we then pull back down and then we kind of trickle away higher until we finally actually have a nice run to buy side taking out these stops up here and trading nicely into this fair value gap and into this bearish order block and then it, this this London kills this London kill zone is quite consolidated. Um, it's not the best, is it? Like the best in terms of examples. But let's just mark out where it's going to because it's all about being able to frame and understand what price is reaching for. And like I said, it's easier said than done in understanding what why prices to turn around at this point you know 
and trade into that light so but one thing i am going to bring our attention to is that three o'clock time so let's say that we are let's say we see this consolidation and we don't want to get involved what i'd do is i'd wait for three three a.m and then at three a.m do i see any kind of breaking market structure well yes we have this swing low here which gets violated with this beautiful down candle so we can look at that as a break of market structure and then you can see our price trades back up into this this is a um, mitigation block high low lower high and break lower so this is like a mitigation if you look at a 50 percent level of that you'll see how we're continuing to respect that so this would be a sell a selling opportunity at this level here so what i'll do is like i said i'll maybe on this candle as we're trading back up into this range of this mitigation let me just draw this out i can call that mitigation and we'll change the color of it which we'll, we'll make that blue And I'd like to sell as price is trading up into that. My stop loss, I'd probably put above this swing high. And you can see our price then starts to trade lower. And then I'll anticipate these relative equal lows. These are relative equal lows to get taken. Which, yes, they do technically get, they do get taken. But you can see how price does pull back and trade deeper into this, um, this, well, this is a part of the mitigation block, isn't it? But you can see we trade deeper into that order block and I guess this is where Forex gets a little bit messy because um, it's moves like this that will catch you out so you can see we trade higher running into this level here which is which is mean threshold of the bearish order block that caused the down move it's still within that but you can see how the bodies are still continuing to respect that 50% level of the mitigation block so that's quite interesting so maybe that's something we should take note of the fact that we, we can reach up into that so this is this entire block from this low to this high is the actual mitigation block because this is we've got a high we've got a low we've got a lower high and then price has broken lower right meaning that this last up candle before the down move is an, an entire mitigation block and that's why we should probably next time put our stop loss above the mitigation block so that we can allow for moves like this to occur because although the volume of um although the volume is respecting the 50 percent level of the wick with the entire block we should take that into consideration so as price trades back into this level because it's mitigation because we've had a break in market structure because it's 3 a.m because we've taken out because we've taken out asia's high as well we can now expect some kind of rush down into Asia's low. So this would all be reasons as to why I'd want to continue to be selling in this period. Like I said, this is easier said than done. There's a lot of consolidation, but this is how we learn. So then price breaks down beautifully here. Um, you can see we continue to break lower. What I like to see is I like to see how these lows are getting taken out. So this low getting taken out aggressively as well is a nice break of structure. So whenever price then returns up to these lows, these are all levels that we can be selling at again as well. Personally, I wouldn't. Why? Purely because like we're already on our way down to our target. But it's just been able to see that um, how these lows are now becoming areas of resistance. We do have a breaker, high, low, higher, high, and then we break lower. So this candle here is a breaker. And what we can do is we can actually draw that out and you'll see how price comes and respects that breaker before running that sell side for one last time. A lot of consolidation, not the, not the ideal situation, but um, that would be a sell as this is a breaker block. So let's just write breaker. Let's not search for breaker. Let's just type that in, and then we'd probably and then I'd get out of my position simply just down here. What's taken into consideration these beautiful relative equal lows that are also. residing below below there then we have another reaction quite aggressive too come down find support where we find support back on that breaker and then it runs out these highs and these highs so if you really if you were really smart you could probably move, get in on this move down and then buy this move higher or buy here at the breaker because it basically just inverts itself 
and allows to take out these highs and then again just goes continues into that consolidation but overall in terms of this london range um i think the best move definitely would have been after 3 a.m the run down into that asia low because like i said asia highs and lows tend to get targeted during london in order to um, sweep liquidity or build um, positions so let's go on to the thursday now oh no sorry yeah let's go on to the thursday and see how that london session looked so we're doing the exact same thing i do for every london session we draw out the high of the asian range asia starts at 7 pm guys we draw out the low of the asian range now you guys don't have to do it the same way but this is how i always go about it you know draw the midpoint of the Asian range and what you'll find is price again during the London session likes to use these levels to help it navigate its targets now obviously we, we're on the one minute chart here so we don't have the luxury of just jumping up to the 15 minute and finding out where liquidity is residing but um, even just getting in on short moves or sw short swings up into the Asian highs and lows you could easily get your um, your fill in for the day as in your trades done during the London session by doing so. But anyway, let's drag this out. We've got the low of the Asian range, we've got the high of the Asian range, and we've got the midpoint. And already you can see um, points at which this Asian range is getting uh, used as like a reference point and even at this point. But let's have a look because we're focusing on London. So has the Asian low get has the Asian low got taken out? Yes, it gets taken out straight away. So what does that mean? We should be now looking at that Asian range high as a potential target don't get me wrong there are times where price will continue lower but like i said it's typical for london to take out the low and the high or the high and the low or the midpoint of the asian range so now that that low has been taken we can anticipate a run up well we can see this happens all before london aggressive trading higher um we have nice breaking market short trust this is a significant swing high why we've got a short-term swing high here short-term swing high here that makes this a, a um, intermediate swing high once that gets taken out this should now act as support we come down touch that and then we also have these relative equal highs here which here which are also getting grabbed so all of this buy side is getting taken out so now we know that um, price is likely going to want to trade up into the asia high so what do we wait for well we want to have some kind of pullback so that we can get in on a nice entry well, we have a breaker here, but that breaker doesn't actually get traded to, unfortunately. However, as as the London starts, you can see we trade lower, running back into this order block, and just about missing that swing high. So let's just get a little bit closer, just to have a better look. So, we, so let's say we wake up just in time for 2 a.m. The Asian range start. I mean, the New York, sorry, the London kills on starts. Price trades lower. Now, is there a willingness to show support? What I'd be looking keeping my eyes out for, keep an eye on all the blocks because they should be continuing to show support. Price trades away, and then as soon as this, as soon as we continue, as soon as we see continued support, remember this is the 50% level of the Asian range. As soon as price continues to show support above that, we know that we can be accumulating our positions in this. Now, this is again, this is all easier said than done. So let's just. Let's be more realistic. We could look at this breaker. We have a short term low. We got we got a low, a high, a lower low, and then you can see our price breaks this swing high here. So once this swing high gets taken, remember with the pretense that we're going to go up to this buy side up here, we know that we can buy in this candle, in this wick, because that is a breaker. So we can draw this out like so, and this candle as we trade into it could be a buy. So let's use that as a buy. And you'll see how it also respects the 50% level. And let me just write breaker. Here there's a lot of back and forth price action that's happening in this fair value gap. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any earlier position, earlier entries that we'd want to enter on this. Probably not. Um, I'd say once this swing high gets taken out as well though, that would say to me that we're likely going to want to continue higher. But let's just make this orange for now. Uh, 
but I think overall for me, um, I like breakers the most as like breakers are probably my favorite entries. So this low, high, lower low, and then break higher at the 50% level with the pretense that we're likely going to run for this buy side residing above the Asia high. This entry here as price as candle trades back down into the buy side liquidity that it's just taken, this entry would be ideal. You can see we find a nice level of support where 50% of this candle, look at how it respects the levels. And that's because candles are wicks too. This is a fairly traded range. Why? Delivered on the upside, downside, upside. So price should find support in it. So that's another buy, you know, and it uses it as a springboard because it's using it almost like a propulsion block to then spring higher. Price then comes down one more time. Where to? This bullish order block that can, again, this should cause a, a proportion higher. Why? Because it's a bullish order block. Every time you see bullish order blocks on the way up in a, you know, an uptrend, these are proportion blocks, so you anticipate them to act as um, to act as yeah proportion blocks. You should anticipate price to springboard off them. So here, once we trade into that, we anticipate price to springboard off it. We take out that high, price comes down one more time. What do we anticipate? Springboard. We move higher. Here, same thing. Price trades back down into the order block. In fact, into the order block open. What are we anticipating? Springboard. Does it springboard? Yes. So. It's definitely interesting and good to look at how price action does such a thing. One thing to take note of, you see how we gap here at this high? Price fails to come back down to this bullish order block. When price fails to touch the previous order block and continues high like this, you know you can get in on the next one and it's likely going to continue much higher because this shows bullishness. The fact that it's gapped away shows bullishness. So that's something to take note of. Um, we continue, you see we continue higher. Again, another gap. So it's showing a lot of bullishness and willingness to want to go higher. And then we run right up. Where do we run up to? Right up back into the, wow, we have a night of a massive consolidation here. So price is, you know, pretty much deemed doomed to be finding resistance there. Um, we don't have a high time frame, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out this low and this high of this consolidation because you can see that's a clear consolidation and then you can see how it's respecting the 50% level of it meaning that it likely yeah so let's see what happens at that three o'clock time I keep I keep bringing us to we'll nearly finish this video guys hope it was interesting so once we take out once we tr trade back into consolidation, you can see that three o'clock here as we come down, we sweep one last time into this swing high, taking out buy stops. And then what are we looking for? We're looking for some kind of break in market should show. Is there a willingness to want to retrace? Well, we have this swing low, which gets violated here. Break of structure. Then we pull back into the range. Again, a lot of back and forth price action, not ideal. Um, I personally wouldn't want to be set. I personally wouldn't want to be trading on this side. Um, but we've seen this kind of happen twice now. When there's a big move before three o'clock, it tends to consolidate after. We saw that on the Tuesday that we analyzed. We had the big move during um, 2 a.m. till 3 a.m. and then it consolidates. On the Wednesday, we had, what did we have? It was kind of the whole day was pretty the whole um, London session was quite pretty consolidated, and then on the Thursday, oh, you can see how we had the move before three a.m. Then it consolidates. So maybe that's something we should start anticipating. If we have a big move in the early hours of the London kill zone, we should probably start to anticipate either a big retracement after three a.m. and consolidation. Let's have a look at the Tuesday again. Yeah. So after after 3 a.m. we have a retracement taking out all of these stops and then it runs higher. Now it's not always going to do the same thing every time, but it does seem like after 3 a.m. there is some kind of reversal. So here, 3 a.m., we reverse and take out all of these stops. Here, 3 a.m., we reverse, take out all of these stops. And then on the Thursday that we're looking at now, we can see 3 a.m. reverse, take out all of these stops. So that's something that that can help us. How can that help us in the future? Well, we know that after 3 a.m., let's quickly, I'm not going to analyze Friday because we don't have much time left, but let's quickly go to Friday and see if it does the same thing. 
uh, Marawi. Three AM is a uh, run on stops. Yes, we trade higher. Now we don't actually take out all the stops, but at least we know now that after three AM, there's probably there's likely going to be a run or a move back into the range that's been created, and that's quite interesting. And let's see where it traded to. That's is that fifty percent. Yeah, up to fifty percent there. So this is why backtesting is so important, guys, because you get to see things like this that you can then apply to your trading, knowing that okay, it's likely we're going to get some kind of retracement, or are we, gonna, or what or a pullback of some sort like even looking at this range from this low to this high you can see we pull right back into an optimal trade entry position for us to then go higher also it's the top remember this is the top of the asian range so we anticipate once we trade through it especially aggressively like this we anticipate this level now to act bullishly we trade back down into it and what happens we have an instant reaction off it and then price aggressively runs higher taking out these highs as soon as that buy side liquidity is grabbed we can start to look for opportunities price pulls back where does it pull back into this is our breaker we've got a low a high a lower low so this candle the last up close before the before the down move the last up close before the down move price pulls back look how the bodies respect that we can buy that and what are the reasons we can buy it one this is the london this is the asian range high we anticipate that acting as a bullish level because we traded through it on the upside and we'll now come back to it two um, we've already retraced back into our range after 3 a.m. and we must be and well um, we should have a bullish bias anyway depending on the fact that we're taking out sell stops residing below here so we're taking out sell side liquidity we're running higher we've pulled back to what's kind of a breaker low high lower low so there's a lot of different confluences that come into these things um, if you want me to go into more detail as into what I'm talking about please leave a comment below I hope this video has been uh, helpful and I'll catch you in the next one peace